Islam and Christianity have been portrayed as mortal enemies for 1400 years. Locked in combat until the end of time, when, finally on the day of judgment, God will announce the winner. This so-called clash of civilizations has defined Christian and Muslim relations from the wars of the Crusades to the war on terror. A story of distrust, sometimes spilling into hatred, that can only be resolved by one side triumphing over the other. But there is another story. It's a story that revolves around one man, a man whom a billion Muslims and 1.2 billion Christians both called Messiah, but in very different ways. Jesus. A person cannot be a Muslim unless they believe in Jesus. Islam's account of Jesus' birth, his life and his death may be uncomfortable for Christians, few of whom know much about it. Christianity does not have an exclusive claim on Jesus. He's a key figure within Islam. Well, you know, wake up and smell the coffee. We do believe in Jesus. But Jesus is our prophet. He, just like you believe in his virgin birth, miraculous nature, we believe in all of those. We say Christian communities later on have changed the narrative. This film presents the Muslim narrative. The story of Jesus as told in the Quran and other Islamic texts. Friday is the holy day for Muslims. At Finsbury Park Mosque in London, worshippers pack in for prayer. It's a scene that plays out every Friday in every mosque in the world. In Muslim countries, it's a holiday. In Britain, it can mean a late dash from work to cram it in. Many will miss the subject of today's talk, how to take inspiration from the example of Jesus. We remember Isa alayhi salam because there is something unique about him. Jesus alayhi salam was mentioned in the Quran in 154 times, in 19 stories, more than Prophet Muhammad himself. If you are introducing Islam to someone or someone is embracing Islam, you just tell him, with the testimonial of faith, he has to say, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad is the messenger of Allah, and I bear witness that Jesus is the messenger of God and his servant, just like Muhammad. When the mosque's previous imam, the infamous hook-handed Abu Hamza, departed, the media departed as well. Since then, the management has been quietly getting on with serving the needs of its community. Uh, for the Friday sermon of the coming period was to focus on how did Islam contribute to the building of a human personality. And I thought that one of the, of the most important uh, examples I can quote is the, uh, the example of Jesus Christ. So when Jesus salam, came, he told people, stop acting like religious while inside you are nothing. And that was one of the main messages that came with him. Both Muhammad and Jesus, peace and blessings be upon them both, came and put their eyes on man. The Quran calls Jesus Isa and refers to him as the son of Mary. This differs from the Bible, which refers to him as the son of God. He was given so many names in the Quran. He was given the name the Word of God and he was given the name the Spirit of God. But so many times he was called Jesus son of Mary, Jesus son of Mary, Jesus son of Mary because he was born miraculously without a father. Jesus' simple lifestyle holds appeal for many Muslims today. We have a tradition that Jesus um, had nothing uh, of possessions, that, that he was somebody that really was teaching, giving up the world. This is why we are here. We're living in a time where consumption is such an incredible impulse now to consume. So this idea that happiness, real liberation, can come by giving up. This is why we are here. 
There's a story in the Islamic tradition which says that Jesus Christ only had three possessions, in fact, a robe uh, to wear, a bowl to drink water and milk from, and a comb for his hair. And then he saw a man uh, drinking from the river using his cupped hand. He said, what do I need this cup for? And he gave it away. And then he saw the man combing his hair with his fingers. He said, what do I need this comb for? He gave that away. Allahu Akbar. I think if Jesus was here today, I think he'd be quite terrifying. If he turned the tables back in those days, I wonder what he would do to the banks today. If you are a real Muslim, you have to believe in other prophets. You have to believe in Jesus and Moses, and we do believe in them. We understand that Jesus is really important in Islam, and like even in the Quran, there's, there's loads of pieces like talking about him. Well, for the Muslims, Jesus is not, he's not the son of God or anything like that. Jesus is, uh, is a prophet. Jesus starts something and Muhammad finishes it, the conclusion. Complete it, complete. The yeah. conclusion for it. It's just like one religion. وَإِذْ قَالَ عِيسَى بْنُ مَرْيَمَ يَا بَنِي إِسْرَائِيلَ Muslims learn about Jesus from the Quran, the holy book, and also from the Hadith, the collected sayings of the Prophet Muhammad. called the Quran, which means the, the recital. And so it, it comes out of an oral culture. And because of that, it has orality, is still part of it. And one of the interesting things about oral people is that oral people, um, stories are very important to them. And the Quran says, we are telling you the best stories. Many stories famous in the Bible can also be found in the Quran. There are accounts of Jesus' miracles, There's even a chapter called Mary. One of the things that you'll notice in the Quran is that many of the same characters that we find in the Bible are there. Like Adam, uh, Cain and Abel. Zachariah is there, Ilyas is there. Solomon is there, David is there. Pharaoh's there, John the Baptist is there. Jesus, Moses, Noah, Abraham, and the rest. But you'll find nuanced versions of these stories that sometimes differ from the, uh, the biblical narrative. Again and again, the Quran makes it clear. God speaking in the Quran says that uh, the Quran is not coming to cancel out the message of the Bible or the gospel or any of the great scriptures of the past. But as well as the similarities, there are differences. In the Quran, stories of Jesus' birth, miracles and crucifixion are radically different from the Bible's version. As Christians, it may come as a surprise to learn that the lives of Jesus and his mother are narrated in the Quran. Like the Bible, the Quran claims that Jesus was born miraculously to the Virgin Mary. Good afternoon. Good Where did you come from? Palestine? No. Jordan? Uh, Libya? As in Christian schools, Muslim schools also teach children about Jesus, but their stories are different from the ones Christian children learn. Because many people don't understand. They think that a prophet is coming to tell people just to go to the mosque, the synagogue, the temple, and just to worship, and to act different, and to be awkward, and to be difficult, and to see everything wrong. No, 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 no. It is there for them to live life. And there is no example that is better for man than an example of a prophet. And for us, as Muslims, the example of Jesus Christ mentioned in the Quran. As Muslims who are living uh, in a Christian country, uh, ruled by a Christian queen, a Christian monarch, uh, it is important for the Muslims to realize that the heritage that this country has, 
in a very good heritage because Christianity and it is essence is the religion of God. And we as Muslims, we must believe in Christianity. How do we call Isa in English? What do we call him? Aman? Jesus, peace be upon him. Very good. But being in an Islamic school, I think it's just a, the general stereotypical attitude that some people have, Muslims and non-Muslims. Islamic school, what do they teach and what are they up to and how will it affect my child's CV? Allah spoke to Jesus, peace be upon him, and gave him some new rules. And he gave him a book called the Injil. Just like he gave Prophet Muhammad afterwards, the Quran. What I emphasize, that which is common between us and the Christian, between Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and Jesus Christ, must be brought together in the life of the children, so that when they live in the wider world, they appreciate that we all come from the same father, and we all have the same ideal. We as Muslims, we have to believe in Jesus, son of Mary, so seriously that we believe he is going to be coming as the prophet of the end of time. إذ قالت الملائكة يا مريم إن الله يبشرك بكلمة بكلمة منه اسمه المسيح عيسى بن مريم. The story of Jesus' birth is narrated in vivid detail in the Quran. As in the Bible, an angel tells Mary she is pregnant despite being a virgin. But the story of what follows then changes completely. In the Quran's version, there's no stable, no manger, and above all, no Joseph. There's no support structure, there's no loving husband, there's no nice midwife. You know, there's no everybody with their bundle of joys and balloons and, and, and cuddly teddy bears coming along to say, Oh, Mary, wonderful, you know. She is alone. In the Bible, Mary's role is limited to the passive mother of Christ. The Quran gives accounts of her ancestry, her birth, her childhood in the Temple of Solomon, and as mother of Jesus. She's the only woman mentioned by name in the Quran. Saint Mary is an Iranian film based on the Quran's version of her life. The film Saint Mary was something that came about because of an inspiration that I always had about, uh, uh, about Virgin Mary. Uh, the story of Virgin Mary mentioned in the Quran. It had a great impact in many Muslim countries. Uh, even Muslims didn't know that uh, how the Quran describes Mary, speaks about her, and uh, how great a lady she is. <laughs> So Mary is uh, treated in the Quran right from her birth and the way she was born and the way she was dedicated to God and the way she was raised and then the way she was being contacted by the angels preparing her, giving her the news that something important is going to happen. خداوند تو را برگزید و پاک گردانی و از میان همه زنان تو را برای امر بزرگ خیش اختیار نمود. She is seen as a as the the ultimate model of perfect balance. As Muslim women, um, we believe that Mary, the mother of Jesus, or as we say in Islam, Isa, is a very powerful role model for us. She's also seen as a symbol of purity, a figure young Muslim women can look up to. At this event, there's a rap performance inspired by stories of Mary in the Quran. You will see the pearl open, open and wide, and inside will shine her inner beauty. When someone told me there's a chapter Mary in the Quran, I was like totally gobsmacked. I was thinking, hold on, I went to school with a lot of Muslims, and then none of them, none of them told me this. So I said, what? There's a chapter Mary. I said, what? There's like the same Mary that's the mother of Jesus. I said, yeah. I said, no, I've got to get this Quran. I'm trying to step like a modern day Mary, mother of Isa, soldier of Allah, spiritual senorita, piety like the first Khalifa. If Mary was here today, as far as I'm concerned as a Muslim woman, 
she'd be rolling with us, you get what I'm saying? Like, she'd be rolling with us, she'd be dressing like us, you know. She'll be, she'll be setting an example the way we're trying to set an example. Before I was a Muslim, you know, I had a red Mohican. I was, like, into short skirts. I was walking about thinking, yeah, you know, I'm liberated, I'm liberated. But I realised men just didn't have no respect for me. Her love of Allah wrote deep when Allah the beneath the earth's crust Free from lust, she never cussed, just placed her trust in Allah Daughter of the dust, so it's a must for us to resurrect her legacy In these days of sin and tragedy <laughs> As in the Bible, an angel tells Mary she is pregnant despite being a virgin. Endel Gabriel comes in and says, I've come to you with the good news. And she says, uh, what is the good news? And uh, Angel says, you are pregnant. What? I'm not even married yet. For us, for a child to be born, there must be a father, there must be a mother, there must be, okay, a marriage. And that, where a child is born. And the angel says, well, God does what he wants. He just says, be and it is. And the angel blew on to Mary. And she conceived. Mariam, man, Jebrail, فرستال دی پروردگار تو ام تا پسری پاکیزه به تو عطا کنم. After she conceives, the Quran's version differs from that in the Bible. There is no Joseph in the story, in, in the Quranic story. She's alone, completely alone, with this burden, literally a physical burden. Instead of being protected by Joseph and giving birth in a manger, Mary's labor takes place alone, under a date tree in the desert. The discomfort of being heavily pregnant in the desert, alone, knowing that you're carrying this sort of scandalous, uh, you know, burden, if you like, and she, she's in the throes of labor. And there, in, you know, in the pain, you see her humanity and you relate to her and she's like, would that I be a thing undone? Would that I be dead before this? spoke to her, comforted her. This is one of the most beautiful things that could ever happen to anyone, that you've been tried and you've gone through the rough bits and now God comforts you. And God spoke to her and said, In the Quran, Mary returns to her people. As an unmarried mother, she causes outrage. She's got to go and go back to her people and explain it. But instead of being able to explain herself, the angel imposes silence upon her. by what's happened. <gasps> Mary points to, to Jesus. What did the child do then? Yes, Islam. He talked. Could you believe a baby talking? But that baby, a newly born baby, raised his head up to the crowd and says, Man Isa Masih, Bandeye Khuda Hastam. Khuda Band, Be Man Kitab Amukhde, Wa Mara Nabobat Dadaas. In the Quran, this is the first miracle of Jesus. The Bible's first miracle is Jesus turning water into wine at the age of 30. Jesus is born without a father and he's born speaking. So basically it's saying, I can do whatever I want. 
The ability to talk as a newborn child is one of many miracles not recorded in the biblical account of Christ's life. We have more sayings in the Islamic tradition about Jesus than you'll find in the Gospels themselves. So there is a possibility that other things did happen. There were many Gospels around uh, that didn't all make it into the New Testament. And the church tried to limit the number of Gospels and lives of Jesus. Isa alayhi salam had the power to take mud in his hand, shape it and form it into a bird, and he will say to the Creator, let it fly as a bird and it will fly. For many Christian scholars though, these miracles are mere fantasies. There are a number of stories that, um, that are alluded to in the Quran and fleshed out in later Muslim tradition that don't occur in the Bible about Jesus. Perhaps the two most famous ones that the Quran um, alludes to would be Jesus turning birds, uh, clay birds into real birds and uh, Jesus talking uh, in the cradle. Um, interestingly, we know where both those stories came from. Both those stories um, were invented by pious, well-meaning Christians uh, in the years between sort of 200 and 300 um, AD. I mean, it's very difficult to verify those things. Um, the New Testament tends to record eyewitness accounts of things that Jesus actually did that were um, witnessed by many people and recorded uh, and then sent out at a time when people could refute them. Um, and they have a different kind of quality, so it seems a, quite a random miracle for a baby to be speaking and for birds to be made out of clay. Prophet Noah, peace be upon him, one of his sons was called Sam, died many, many years before. And Jesus, peace be upon him, brought him back to life and said, look, this person's from long ago. They were pious fairy tales, would be the best way to describe them. The miracles performed during Jesus' life may cause debate among Christians and Muslims. But it's the Bibles and the Quran's conflicting accounts of his death that go to the heart of the differences between the two faiths. It so radically challenges the Christian view that I think it really bothers a lot of Christians. Just the, the idea that, hey, this is our Jesus. The Islamic version of the events of Jesus' life contradicts many core beliefs of the Christian faith. In the Christian narrative, the, the, the most central and fundamental point of Christianity is the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Well, Islam basically denies that. <laughs> In the Bible, Jesus is betrayed by Judas and crucified by the Romans. The Quran says this only appeared to happen. There two versions in the Islamic tradition about it appeared to them. Some of them say that there was a replacement for Christ on the cross. When the Romans had captured uh, Jesus and were taking him away to the cross to be crucified, God Almighty set into motion a rescue operation. God turns the appearance of Judas Iscariot so that he looks like Jesus and in all the scuffle and turmoil the Roman soldiers actually arrest not Jesus who is taken out of the situation by the four main angels. They arrest Judas and he's saying hang on a minute I'm, I'm Judas and they say come on you know, we know you're Jesus we know what he looks like. And he sent down angels to carry Jesus up into the heavens.
The other opinion is appearance and reality. You thought something happened, it didn't happen in reality, and it really leaves it at that. But Christians believe that the Bible's account of Jesus' death by crucifixion, written several centuries before the Quran, is the true one. One or two um, secular scholars have said that the, uh, the crucifixion of Jesus is one of the most historically verifiable events of the first century. We have such uh, good evidence for it. So there's absolutely no way the first Christians would want to invent that story. Um, crucifixion was about the most embarrassingly uh, and the most uh, socially disreputable way you could die um, in the first century. So to claim that for your, for your Lord and your Master is never going to happen. Christians believe this was the moment where God perfectly revealed his love for humanity by letting Jesus die on a cross for the sins of the world. Um, so it's a real fundamental, uh, central, crucial point of the Christian faith. Um, and as you look on into the, the history of the church, it's become, uh, again, central in our understanding, in our architecture, in our jewellery, uh, in our songs. Uh, it has an absolutely central place that Jesus really did die on the cross and then rise again three days later. To find the story of Christ's crucifixion and resurrection being changed is too much for some Christians. Jay Smith is an evangelical Christian who spent 25 years studying Islam. He's dedicated to disproving the Quran's version of Jesus' last day on earth. If Jesus were to come down the speaker's corner, I would imagine he'd get up on the ladder like I'm going to get up on the ladder. What he would say to Muslims specifically is they would probably confront them with what they've done to him what their scriptures have done to him, not them personally, what their scriptures have done to him by taking away his divinity, by also suggesting that the greatest act of history, the most sacrificial uh, act that anybody has done to die for mankind, God himself to die for that which he has created, has completely been eradicated, has completely been thrown out of their scriptures. And we're going to be debating the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Did it happen or did it not happen? Okay, he's a veteran debater, Jay has taken on academics at all levels. Sure. Yet his heart remains at Hyde Park Speaker's Corner. Let each speaker say his point. He can be found here most Sundays, challenging Muslims on their beliefs about Jesus. I will take care of the Christians, you take care of the Muslims. All right, no problem. <laughs> My view is that um, a, a crucifixion happened, but it, it wasn't Jesus that was crucified. And there was, there's many um, historical sources that, in the, that actually um, uh, show that many Christians believe that uh, Jesus was not crucified. You ready? Yeah. Okay, let's go. The issue today is whether or not Jesus Christ died on the cross. You don't know if you're going to go off on a tangent and make no sense. You don't know if you're going to get a lot of cat calls. You have no idea how it's going to go on that particular day. You can't control it. Jesus himself speaks about his own death. He mentions it five times. Twice in Matthew, one in the book of Mark, and twice in the book of John. I believe in a loving and forgiving God, nor of a God who's so bloodthirsty that the only way he can forgive sin is not through his mercy. No, he needs blood sacrifice to forgive sin. The God of the Bible asks you to take nobody's life. The God of the Bible comes and gives his life for you. The God of the Bible did that 2,000 years ago. The God of the Bible, Jesus Christ, who came as a man, he was on the cross. He died for every one of you. It was his, his voluntary act. And even Paul himself, He's having arguments with other Christians who are denying that Jesus died. You've been to heaven? I have seen Jesus. And you've seen Jesus? Thank you very much. Bye bye. You don't believe the Old the Messiah the speaks about you his own death. Because if Jesus had not been on the cross, then I'm damned today. We might as well tell tale and go home. The essence of Islam is submission to the absolute, to the divine. And that's what, where salvation lies, in submission to the divine, or at least a recognition of the divine. In Christianity, salvation lies through the acceptance of the blood of the Lamb. That is, is a completely different narrative than the Quran is giving. Who's right? Well, the Quran says, you make your choice here, and I'm going to let you know in the next world. Quran <laughs> al 
Muslims also dispute the Christian idea of Jesus' divinity, the belief that he was God in the flesh. In fact, the Quran warns Christians against this. Desist, it says, God is one and Jesus is his servant. To say Jesus died on a cross or that uh, Jesus was a little, that God was a little baby or that God was died on a cross or God was a little baby, this is a heresy. Um, and to say that Jesus was God, full stop, is also a heresy. A lot of Christians don't realize this. The Quran says that, that the, the heavens were re almost rent asunder, that the mountains were almost obliterated, that the earth almost shook at the idea that we would say that, that, that God had a son. In the Quran, it says that on the Day of Judgment, God will actually ask Jesus Christ, Did you tell the people that you were God? And Jesus says, You know what I said. You see everything I say and do. I would never say that. Glory to you. Transcendent are you. I would never say that. I have no right to say that. Zachariah King is a poet who runs an Islamic bookstall on Edgware Road. Priest in confession weep out through each town omen sweet round. This land will never suffer love again until my beautiful motley Maria is refound. His understanding of Jesus in the Quran influenced him to reject the Jesus of Christianity. Why aren't you Muslim? Why well, aren't I? I'm a Jew. Why You're a Jew? Oh, I was previously Christian. Hey Allah. Allah. Once I started to learn about Islam, and realizing that uh, you know, Jesus prayed, Jesus ate, Jesus went to the toilet, Jesus was born, Jesus had companions, all of these things that he went through pain, that he went through anguish, that he beseeched his Lord. These things are not befitting for me of God and therefore, therefore the Son of God. For Christians to believe that Jesus was God in human form is absolutely fundamental because um, it means that God understands us. God isn't some distant deity living in the glory of heaven. Uh, he can understand what it's like to be in pain, to be betrayed, uh, to be hurt, to be bruised, uh, to be bullied. God understands our situation. If Jesus was God, then who was supporting the world while he was supposed to be dead? Or, or um, if he was God, then who was he praying to? Three books. What doesn't work is that God has family. I can't believe that Mary can give birth to, to God. For God to be God, he has to be the creator and have and not 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 become part of creation. Both Muslims and Christians believe that Jesus will return to earth to restore justice to the world. They also believe that before he returns, an evil person or system called the Antichrist will have gained influence over the planet. The story of the Antichrist, I think, should uh, be made a film. Uh, the Islamic version of the Antichrist, not the other one. He's called the Antichrist or the False Christ uh, because he stands for everything which goes against Jesus Christ's message. So instead of love and mercy, the Antichrist stands for hatred and war instead of being devoted to God and, uh, and renouncing the world, the Antichrist stands for greed and exploiting the world and exploiting power, etc. In Islamic tradition, the Antichrist is called Dajjal. And a Dajjal really means the imposter, you know, the liar, the deceiver. Now, if you look at the word Dajjal, which means Antichrist in Arabic, the root word is to put pitch or tar over a mangy camel and what happens when you do that is the mange goes away it suppresses it like putting a cortisone on eczema and then you sell the camel because it looks good and so the person buys it thinking it's a healthy camel and then a week later the mange re-emerges in the bible the book of revelation says there'll come a time when no one will be able to buy or sell without the mark of the antichrist
666, the mark of the beast. The main understanding of Muslim Antichrist prophecies is of an actual person. Vivid descriptions of his appearance and abilities can be found in the Hadith, the collected sayings of the Prophet Muhammad. The Prophet Muhammad said, every prophet has warned his people about the Dajjal, about the Antichrist, but he said, I will tell you something which none of the other prophets told their people, and that is that he has one eye. One eye. One eyed. One eye. One eye which will be damaged. There will come a person who would rule using brute force, tyranny, who would disbelieve uh, openly, who would uh, kill, maim and destroy anything and everything. He's the pitch man. He's the one who's, who's like pitching you this, buy this product, the seven deadly sins, lust, greed, pride, gluttony, right? The, the, you're really going to enjoy these. You're going to have a good time. He will do things that are beyond the ability of anyone. Uh, for example, by uh, cutting a man in two, it says. Right down the middle. And then bringing him back to life. I mean, after you've witnessed such an event, it would be very difficult not to believe in such a person. Christ says, go and sin no more. I, you know, you're forgiven. Uh, the Antichrist says, there's no sins to forgive. Go do whatever you want. Both Muslims and Christians agree that Jesus will return to defeat the Antichrist. But whereas the Bible uses metaphorical language to describe the event, Islamic tradition gives a blow-by-blow -blow account of exactly what will happen when Jesus comes back. Abdul Rahim Green is in charge of schools tours at Regent's Park Mosque. As a young man, he rejected the Christian Jesus for the Jesus of Islam. And I've always, you know, had this and still do have this great love and affection for Jesus. There's nothing that affects me quite as much as when I hear the Quran being recited. He's also a popular speaker at Islamic events and has been booked to tell the Muslim version of the second coming of Jesus. This is the time when Jesus, the son of Mary, Isa ibn Maryam, he will descend. Now, Isa... Carmen Schultz and Valerie Streit are two Christians who've come to find out more about the second coming of Jesus in Islam. In my faith as a Christian, obviously um, Jesus comes back and I would like to see what are the similarities, what are the differences in the understanding. Well, I heard there was a secret chord that David played and it pleased the Lord. In contrast to the Bible, in Islamic tradition, the second coming of Jesus is narrated in vivid detail. Well, it goes like this, the fourth, the fifth, the minor fall and the major lift, the baffled king composing hallelujah. The basic scenario that's given is the world becomes filled with an immense amount of oppression and injustice, and Christ returns in, in an eastern part of Damascus. His hands will be resting on the shoulders of two angels. and his hair will be as if it is dripping with oil. And when he shakes his head, the, 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 beads, will be like, the beads of the oil will be like pearls. Some of the details um, were different too with the whole idea of the oil and the, I thought it was um, interesting. I mean, I'd never heard of that before. Hallelujah, hallelujah. So he will actually pray behind the Muslim Imam, who is regarded as being the caliph at the time. And then he will take part with that leader in the battles against the Antichrist. He will 
destroy the cross and kill the pig. By him coming back, destroying the crosses, and, and saying, you know, no one can receive worship but Allah, that's really making a point that, you know, all the things that Christians have said about Jesus in the past, they're wrong. And so it, it kind of felt like very strong. The moment a Dajjal sees Isa ibn Maryam, Jesus the son of Mary, he will begin to dissolve like salt dissolves in water. Hallelujah! 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 The Christians who claim to be following Jesus will have to accept Islam at this point, the ones who are alive at that time, because he will say to them, if you want to follow me, you have to follow Muhammad. As a Christian, I, I don't believe that Jesus is going to declare himself to be a Muslim. And I mean, that's going to be a bone of contention, I think, between Muslims and Christians. Even as we speak in Medina, in Saudi Arabia, next to the grave, the resting place of Muhammad, peace be on him, right next to that is an empty space reserved for Jesus. The Islamic um, understanding of the second coming that you often hear Muslims talk about, Jesus coming, wearing white robes, ascending in Damascus, breaking the cross, killing every pig, is all grown up um, f uh, fictionally, I, I would probably say, uh, a case of fictions, fiction and legends and later stories. People who tell these stories to each other, all their names and details about their lives were actually recorded so that people could tell the difference between liars and people with bad memories from those with very good memories and who are reliable storytellers, if you like, or transmitters of the hadith. Not all Muslims and Christians see themselves in disagreement. Adam Williamson and Jamie Clark are good friends. Adam is a Muslim and Jamie is a Christian. Despite having different views on Jesus, they often find common ground. You know, I could get into a lot of trouble for saying this, but I do think that there's a lot of truth you know, about Jesus in the Quran. I'm not looking for where they contradict each other, I'm looking for where they, they don't contradict each other, because that's where the truth is, I, f I feel. But that doesn't mean, for me, that I'm, I have to be a Muslim. I'm, the Christian truth is still very deep in my heart. One of the things that I love about Islam, I really love this, is that God has set up all of these, these meta-narratives like the Christians have their version of reality, the Jews have their version of reality, the Buddhists have their version of reality, the Muslims have their version of reality, the secularists, atheists have their version of reality. And all of these are talked about in the Quran, all these different realities. And then the Quran says, you better think about these. Think deeply about these. Don't just assume that these are correct. You have to think, you have to use your brain. There's a quote in the Quran, which a lot of Christians have difficulty with, which is, be not a friend to, to a Christian or Jew. And that's, you know, that's so easy to kind of take completely the wrong way, but maybe if you look at it a little bit deeper, I mean, it, it reflects something about, maybe it's just saying accept your differences, you know, accept your differences and, and, and be. It takes a certain amount of arrogance for me to go to Jamie and, 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 and start telling him he's, you know, he's going on the wrong path and vice versa, you know, it's not, it's not, my, it's not my place, you know, we're at, we, we, we've got to admit, you know, to a certain extent we're all fumbling around, you know, looking for some form of truth. I invite you to accept Islam because the difference between me and you I do the prayer that the Prophet Muhammad did, Sallallahu I recite the same as he recited. I have the same movements, I have the same prayers. But the Christians do not have the prayer that Jesus had. I think it's profoundly important that, that Muslims um, follow the Christian version of Jesus. Firstly, because Jesus claimed about himself that, um, that it was how you responded to him that determined how God would judge you and where your future lay. 
Uh, and my concern for Muslims is they're following a Jesus who is a non-historical Jesus. They need to get back to the original, to his message, and what he said about himself. The Prophet Muhammad's most important concern in engaging people that were hostile to him was how I can turn this enemy into a friend. And that only comes from love. That comes from a concern. And I think the centrality of love in the Christian tradition is a, is a very beautiful quality. And it's something that many Muslims have forgotten about their own faith. And I think there's an immense amount that Muslims can learn from Jesus. I also think there's an immense amount that Christians can learn from Muhammad. <laughs> Has democracy been stifled rather than spread in Latin American countries? Filmmaker John Pilger argues that it has in the documentary War on Democracy tomorrow night on ITV1 at 11. The vicar's wives prepare for Easter next this evening, then looking at the different religions of the world. This week, Essentials of Faith investigates Judaism. That's at 12.45. <laughs>